Okay, so this is the second tutorial on the muscles of the leg. So then in this tutorial I'm going to cover the muscles of the anterior and lateral compartments. So these compartments are supplied by the common peroneal branch of the sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve um, splits into two branches at the popliteal fossa. The tibial branch supplies the posterior compartment and then you've got the common fibula or common peroneal branch which winds around laterally over the head of the, lat the lateral head of the gastrocnemius over the neck of the fibula where it's vulnerable to impact injuries and uh, fractures and then it splits into two branches which supply the anterior and the lateral compartments so I'll just fade away the muscles and then you can see how this nerve splits so you've got the common fibula branch coming around laterally and then it splits into these two branches you've got the superficial branch which supplies the muscles of the lateral compartment and you've got the deep branch which supplies the anterior compartment so the muscles of the anterior compartment um, mainly act to dorsiflex, extend the toes and to invert the foot and there are four muscles in this compartment and this compartment is supplied by the superficial branch of the common fibular nerve. The lateral compartment only has two muscles and these muscles mainly act to evert the, flo the foot and this compartment is supplied by the superficial branch of the common fibular nerve. Okay, so you have two muscles in the lateral compartment of the leg. You've got the peroneus longus or the fibularis longus, which is this muscle here. And you've got the fibularis brevis, which lies deep to the fibularis longus and attaches a bit lower down on the fibula. So I'll just show you the fibularis longus muscle. So the fibularis longus muscle, as you can see its origin, um, attaches on the upper lateral surface of the fibula and also on the lateral side of the head of the fibula and it has an interesting tendon because it actually crosses over underneath the foot to insert medially at the distal end of the medial cuneiform bone and at the base of the proximal sorry the base of the first metatarsal here so if we just follow this tendon around you can see it um, runs down behind the lateral malleolus and then it descends and curves forward on the lateral side of the calcaneus and then passes under the foot and it then passes under the cuboid bone and in this bone there's a groove for the for the tendon so I'll just show you that so if we just look I've just rotated the model and we're looking at the underside of the foot, the plantar surface of the foot. So this is the cuboid bone, which is one of the tarsal bones that sits laterally. So the, the tendon of the peroneus longus actually runs in a groove um, in this cuboid bone. I think it's a little bit out of place here, but you can see this groove here. So the tendon runs underneath the foot through the groove on the cuboid bone and attaches to the base base of the first metatarsal and also distally on the medial cuneiform bone. So you can just see that tendon coming across um, and it inserts distally on the medial cuneiform and at the base of this first metatarsal. So what this muscle does um, is that it actually everts the foot and it can also um, assist in plantar flexion. So you can just imagine, so seeing the insertion point here, you could just visualize if this muscle were to contract, it would pull this, pull the foot round into eversion. So eversion is when the soles of the feet face away from each other and inversion is when you bring the soles of the feet to face each other. So another um, point about the peroneus brevis is that it actually provides support to the arch, arches of the foot. Um, so it mainly supports the lateral and transverse arches. And if you remember in my last tutorial, the 
tibialis posterior also provided um, support to the arch due to its insertion on the medial aspect of the foot. And there's another muscle which I'll come on to talk about later in this tutorial called the tibialis anterior which also inserts medially on the foot, foot and contributes to arch support. So I've just brought back in all the muscles and this muscle here is the tibialis anterior which I'll talk about later and you can see its tendon which winds around and inserts also on the base of the first metatarsal um, and if I just remove this muscle here you can see um, the tibialis posterior tendon so you've got these three tendons coming in to attach to the underside on the medial aspect of the foot and these sort of act to support the arches so you've got the tibialis anterior um, tendon here you've got the poster tibialis posterior tendon and you've got the peroneus, um, peroneus longus tendon or the fibularis longus tendon coming coming in from this side so these all function to support the arches of the foot so next we've got the peroneus brevis muscle or the fibularis brevis um, so if we just remove the this muscle. So this lies deep to the fibularis longus and this lies on the lower two-thirds on the lateral surface of the shaft of the fibula and you can see this tendon here it winds around behind the lateral malleolus just like the fibularis longus and then it curves around and inserts onto the base of the fifth metatarsal so what this muscle does is it averts the foot. Um, so the peroneus brevis and the peroneus longus, or fibularis brevis, fibularis longus if you want, um, are innervated by the superficial branch of the common peroneal or common fibular nerve. So next we've got the muscles of the anterior compartment of the leg. And there are four muscles in this compartment. You've got the tibialis anterior, the extensor hallucis longus, the extensor digitorum longus, and the fibularis tertius. So these muscles mainly act to dorsiflex, um, extend the toes, and to invert the foot. So I'll start with um, this muscle here, the tibialis anterior, which is the most superficial muscle. So I've just isolated this muscle, and you can see it's attachment on the tibia, um, on the lateral side of the tibia and on the adjacent interosseous membrane. So this muscle forms a tendon which runs down the front of the leg and inserts medially on the foot. So this, this muscle actually provides support for the arch of the foot as well as the tibialis posterior and the fibularis longus. So you can see its attachment on the foot here. So it, it inserts on the medial, the sort of lower surface of the medial cuneiform bone and on the adjacent base of the first metatarsal. So you can see by this medial attachment on the foot that if this muscle contracts it would pull the foot up so that it will invert the foot. So again inversion is when you bring the foot up so both the soles face each other um, and it will also dorsiflex the foot so it will pull the pull the toes up in this direction towards the head. So that's the tibialis anterior and it's innervated by the deep branch of the common peroneal nerve, so the deep or fib, fibular nerve, the deep fibular nerve. Um, so all the muscles in the anterior compartment are innervated by the deep fibular nerve. So next we've got the two extensor muscles um, of the digits and of the great toe. So you've got the extensor digitorum longus and the extensor hallucis longus. So just like in the posterior compartment where you've got um, the flexor of the toes and the flexor of the big toe, in the extensor com compartment, the anterior compartment, you've got the extensor of the big toe, extensor hallucis longus, and the extensor of the digits, so extensor digitorum longus. So I've just removed the tibialis anterior, and we'll just have a look at the, this muscle here, the extensor hallucis longus. So if I just isolate that, so you can see it now here, um, it sits 
but it does, it's not quite shown here but it actually sits medially on the fibula on the middle half of the fibula and it also attaches to the uh, the bit of the interosseous membrane that's adjacent to the fibula so it attaches here its origin and it descends along anteriorly on the leg and crosses over medially to insert here um, at the base of the distal phalanx of the great toe so because of this um, muscle attachment when this muscle contracts it extends the big toe um, and because of its because it's anchored here at the ankle it can also dorsiflex the ankle so when it contracts it brings the toes up so if I just bring the other muscles back into view you can see well you can see these two retinaculum this is, these are the extensor retinaculum so you've got a superior and inferior retinaculum so these extensor retinaculum um, they hold the extensor tendons in place so I'll just remove them for now um, and you can look at the well, we'll look at the other side, we'll look at the left side because I haven't removed the tibialis anterior. So you can look at the relationship of these tendons. So the tibialis anterior tendon is most medial. Then you've got the extensor hallucis longus tendon in between um, the tendon of the extensor digitorum longus, which I'll just talk about now. So it sits between the extensor digitorum longus tendon and the tibialis anterior tendon on the anterior aspect of the distal leg so just worth noting that relationship um, so next we've got the extensor digitorum longus muscle so it, the name gives away its function it extends it's the long extensor of the digits so it, it attaches superiorly to the extensor hallucis longus muscle so it's this muscle here I'll just isolate it so if we just take a look at the attachment, so you can see the extensor hallucis longus muscle a bit inferiorly with its origin, and the extensor digitorum longus attaches higher up on the proximal medial surface of the proximal tibia. And it's also got this attachment on the lateral condyle of the tibia. So that's its origin. And if we follow the muscle down, we can see that it splits to form four tendons which then attach to the digits so the insertion point of these of the extensor dig digitorum longus is on the basis of the intermediate and the distal phalanges so I'm not sure if it's actually shown on this model um, no it's not but the this tendon um, attaches to the basis of the middle and the distal phalanges so what this muscle does is it extends the lateral four digits and it can also dorsiflex at the ankle. Okay, so the final muscle that I'm going to talk about is the a small little muscle called the fibularis tertius or the peroneus tertius. So I'll just move remove away the other muscles so we can take a look at this. I've just zoomed in a little bit and you can see this muscle here. This is the fibularis tertius or the peroneus tertius. And this muscle originates, as you can see, distally on the medial surface of the fibula. So it's not um, that clear on this model here, but the peroneus tertius or fibularis tertius is often considered a part of the extensor digitorum longus. And it's sometimes actually joined together with this muscle. So runs down into the foot and this tendon inserts medially on the base of the fifth metatarsals. So what this muscle does is that it everts the foot and assists in um, dorsiflexing the foot. So those are the muscles in the anterior compartment of the foot, sorry the leg. Um, so you've got the tibialis anterior, which you can see here. You've got the extensor of the four toes, called the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor of the big toe, the extensor hallucis longus, and you've got the little peroneus tertius, which is often um, thought of as part of the extensor dig digitorum longus. 
So the way I remember the muscles of the anterior and the posterior compartments is that the deep layer of the muscles in the posterior compartment is quite similar to the the muscles of the anterior compartment. So you've got the the tibialis muscles in the anterior compartment, you've got the tibialis anterior, and in the posterior compartment you've got the tibialis posterior, and then you've got the muscles which act on the the toes, the four toes, the four digits. Um, so you've got the extensor digitorum longus in the anterior compartment, and in the posterior compartment you've got the flexor digitorum longus, and then you've got the muscle which acts on the big toe. So you've got the extensor hallucis longus in the anterior compartment, and correspondingly you've got the flexor hallucis longus in the posterior compartment. And then you've got a little small muscle. So in the anterior compartment, the little small muscle is the peroneus tertius. And in the posterior compartment, the little small muscle is the popliteus. So that's just one way of thinking of these things to help you remember different muscles and how they act.